Please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Hello and welcome to Commodity Champions, your weekly dose of what's brewing in the commodity space. I'm Manisha Gupta. Well, this week has been all about the precious metals, gold and silver. The gold prices are down by close to 3% in this week. The prices are now headed for a six-weekly decline and the biggest weekly decline since middle of 2017. On the other hand, you have silver prices headed for the biggest weekly decline since February. So what is it that is putting pressure on the gold prices? One, it is the global demand that has been the lowest since 2009. Two, the positive really has been that the demand in electronics and vehicles for gold is at a three-year highs. But then again, there's an expectation of a Fed rate hike in the month of September, and that is further putting pressure on the prices. Back in India, the demand is down by 8% in April to the June quarter. But let's take a look at how the other metals fared in this week. Platinum prices hit their lowest since 2008, and palladium is at a 13-month lows. The other industrial metals also have been on the weaker side, where you have the copper and zinc trading at a one-year lows. The crude oil prices also have seen a decline in this week. While the Brent is headed for a third weekly decline, you have the U.S. crude prices headed for a seventh weekly decline. So with these pressure on the metals, can gold be really used as a safe haven? To talk about that and more, we are now joined by Kunal Shah, who's head commodities and currencies at Nirmal Bang. We also have with us Colin Shah, who's vice chairman, Gems and Jewelry Export Promotion Council. We also have with us Peter McQuire, who's chief executive officer at XM Australia. Gentlemen, hi, thank you so much for joining us. But before we talk about the gold prices, Peter, let me come to you with the kind of global cues that we are dealing with. It has really been about Turkey all of this week, where we have seen the currency continue to decline, and the markets have actually seen a role because of that as well. What is your sense on how we've ended the week? Next week, of course, the Turkey is on a holiday for the whole week, but how are you getting into the next week now? Well, I think first off, if you look at the geopolitical tensions and what's happened as far as Turkey, it's been one-way traffic, US dollar strengthening, what's happening with Fed, and of course, the uncertainty across Turkey and uh, the Erdogan uh, leadership. As the United States and President Trump looks at, um, you know, from a, uh, from a, a big picture, there is no doubt that it's creating a lot of uncertainty and naturally sell-offs. And that's been demonstrated. Turkish lira has been hit terribly hard. And a lot of the other markets, a lot of the other FX markets have just had, you know, huge volatility swings. So uh, I think that it'll probably settle down a little bit over the next couple of days, but I wouldn't be surprised to see further short a softness and shorting for those markets, you know, going till the end of the month at least. Peter, I also want to talk about the metals because we have seen all of that impact come in for this space because of what we have seen uh, as in sense of stress on one side, perhaps showing oversold to the market on the other. But with the kind of cues that we are working with right now where the demand has slowed down, would you look at further decline come in for the industrial metals? Well, if you look at the copper market, I mean, and that's the probably the, the best one to take a, a, a big snapshot on. Sitting at that 260, 261 a pound, you know, cents per pound, it's been a, a dramatic sell off over the last, you know, five to six weeks. It's been exa exacerbated over the last week or two with, uh, and uh, probably if you put your mind back to say 2015, 20, early 2016, it still has a hell of a long way to go if you wanted to retrace and cover those numbers. So I think the copper market. Probably it's going to be a 245 to 250 play to the downside, I think, in the short term. Uh, will it go lower from there? That depends on uncertainty. It depends on China, of course. Depends on emerging markets and the general health of the of the global uh, economic situation. And at the present, uh, you would have to say, stay out of the way because the bears seem to be running the show. Oh, well, absolutely. Kunal, let me get you in the conversation as well. And the metals prices really have continued to decline 16 to 26 percent down from their June highs. Of course, the Indian rupee has been a factor as well. But with the China and the U.S. talking in the next week now, how are you building up your positions for this sector? Yeah, uh, good evening. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, just a condolence. Uh, we've uh, lost our beloved uh, Atal Bihari ji. Uh, I pray his soul may rest in peace. Uh, 
second the the question what you are referring to is is on metals and i believe that uh, metal prices have declined too much at this juncture we have seen all metals have corrected uh, almost to the levels of uh, may to june 2017 uh, levels and if you look at the us <coughs> gdp and the global gdp the only 0.2% downward revision coming from imf i, I clearly believe that uh, is just a matter of time that we are likely to see a sharp pullback i'm not saying that metals are again going to post new highs but these are not the levels where uh, short positions should be created mm. these are the levels where one should act uh, contra a uh, metals like copper it was trading at uh, 8000 uh, almost uh, uh, 7200 dollars now it is trading at 5800 dollars uh, there is a good opportunity still the growth in global economy is strong there are no and and remember there is a us china trade talks which is going to be initiated by the end of this uh, week, uh, by the end of next week right. so i think it's a good opportunity uh, you may have to brace the volatility but the overall trend remains bullish uh, i think on indian bosses 405 good levels to go long in copper hmm. for the upside target of uh, 420 to 425 perhaps during the next week point taken so yes one the metals are oversold and the two there is that important meeting coming in the next week and that actually could be an impetus to start buying here but peter coming back to you the crude oil prices also are headed for a weekly decline seventh straight week of decline for the us crude oil prices there are uh, some asian demand concerns here how are you reading up to the prices now you know there's that's a that's a a tough one in the sense where you've got so many moving parts US dollar strength naturally, but more importantly, um, you've got the possibility of weather outages for that US through hurricane. You've got the geopolitical concerns and what the sanctions are doing to the likes of Iran. Uh, where does the Turkey situation play? Does Russia get involved? So I think that the crude markets will probably oscillate and be a, a you know, a, a, a pretty much range bound. I don't see anything dramatic happening leading up to the, uh, the the early December meeting in OPEC in Vienna, I'd say probably, you know, plus or minus 5% to 8% from these sort of numbers, unless you see something dramatic happen. And then you're going to see, you know, those very, very large swings. At the moment, you've got to say that crude's been relatively constrained compared to the other commodities. And it hasn't shown any, you know, great volatility uh, in the over the last matter of, you know, eight to, say, 15 trading sessions compared to other markets. Well, we have been making lower lows in this space as well. So, of course, there is a lot of uncertainty coming in there. Kunal, what's your final word on crude oil prices? What range are you working with for the near term? Uh, we have been stating uh, that oil rent uh, crude prices should test $70. It has already test $70. I'm not expecting in near terms uh, uh, Brent crude oil to slip below 70 and WTI to slip below 65. On account of uh, trade war, on account of Chinese slowdown, we've already seen a correction of more than 15% in oil. And remember, we still have impending uh, events such as US-Iran, how that uh, sanctions are playing off going forward during next month. So I think this is it uh, for, for the time being. I'm not expecting oil to go below from these levels. And you can see a pullback in Brent to 74, 73, 74. And for the same reason in WTI, 67 uh, and a half, 68 dollars. But uh, the overall trend uh, is not very bullish. Uh, sell on rallies, uh, if you look at the forward curves, they are clearly indicating that uh, there is no, there's no uh, reasons for one should go a sharp upside in crude oil. Uh, oil should uh, continuously underperform. And WTI in particular looks very bearish to me because uh, US oil production will hit 11.5 million barrel uh, production in next uh, three to four months. So uh, overall bearish, but for this moment, I, I think a pullback is expected. <laughs> All right. But there is one commodity which has had a complete breakdown in recent few days, and that really has been gold. We've not only just broken below $1,200 per ounce, but below 1180 and we did see a 19 month lows of 1160 as well wherever you look the numbers really have been on the weaker side whether it's the global central bank buying the global etf buying the physical buying the investment buying none of that really has been supportive and the safe haven buying also did not come to gold or rather ditched gold in full glory colin getting you in the conversation really even as the gold prices have been declining do you think do you think this is a time that indian consumers perhaps will finally start buying the Indian consumer, based on uh, you know the sentiment that we had at our IIJS, you know mm. our uh, the largest exhibition that we have during the year uh, last weekend, 
was extremely bullish, extremely positive. You know, uh, as per our guesstimates, there were nearly 8,000 crores of transactions which happened. Most exhibitors said that uh, they had like uh, you know their best uh, show ever, nearly 20% up compared to last year. And if you see our import numbers, last year, uh, I guess, as everyone in the country recollects, we had GST happening in July. And that's why June was like Diwali coming early. And this year, we have not really had uh, you know, that effect. So it's not really down if you compare historically with the previous years. And the weddings this year, we've had a lot of uh, inauspicious days, weeks mm. in the last couple of months. Uh, Kerala, which is the largest per capita consumption of gold in the country, they're in the midst of this uh, very heavy rains and monsoons and floods. So retail is going to be a little damp next couple of weeks. But we all feel in the industry that the last two quarters of this year are going to be extremely strong. There are a lot of weddings. And uh, if the sentiment at uh, IIJS, at our show, is anything to go by, we expect uh, you know, the, next, uh, the, the, the last two quarters of the year to catch up for the whole year. Hmm. Colin, also tell us, on, uh, while of course IRGS is a big milestone to go by, but what is your sense on the retail buying into the Indian markets? Is that going to pick up? Because until now, we've seen 400 tons plus of imports into India. The World Gold Council says it is going to be between 700 to 800 tons. Do you see that much of a demand coming in for the second half of this year? We definitely see that uh, happening because there are two, uh, I guess, events happening again this year. GST has settled down, and mm. if you, um, you know, if uh, all the large retailers and even the regional uh, retailers which are there, if you talk to them, they're all on an expansion spree. So having said that they're going to increase their retail footprint, there is going to be upstocking happening for, for that part of the business. And besides that, like I said earlier, there are a lot more weddings coming up in the second half of the year. So, you know, consumption will happen for sure after the monsoons. <laughs> All right, we are pretty hopeful on that. But gentlemen, hold on, stay on with us. We will go for a very short break. We will come back and discuss the precious metals in detail analysis and get you on what to expect really in sense of returns, investment and numbers for the rest of 2018. And we are discussing gold right now, which has seen a complete sell-off. A 19-month lows is what we've seen into the international markets. Peter, let me begin with you. What is your sense on the reasons behind this? Is it uh, the strength in US dollar, the safe haven buying completely out of the window? What is your sense onto this? You know, 1170, 1180, I would have thought that that was, you know, lows. But again, um, you know, that uncertainty factor, everyone's just piling into US dollar. I think gold market in some ways has been oversold. I wouldn't be surprised to see it bounce from here It'll take the others up with it naturally, you know, little brother silver and, and probably platinum a little bit. But I feel as though that the gold market's got the potential to bounce and the shorts may get squeezed. Let's just wait and see. But, you know, you, the, those sort of markets, people are trading, you know, it's a 24 by 5 market. And, you know, the the amount of, um, I've, you know, been watching COMEX numbers, conscious as far as what the dollar trade is and, you know, You've got many screens doing many different things, and I think a lot of traders at the moment are just really looking for an opportunity to, you know, get long gold, and that may happen, you know, in the next couple of trading sessions. Sometimes the lights change, and uh, traders look for opportunity. Shorts will get squeezed, and they'll, you know, bang it up ten or fifteen, twenty dollars very, very quickly. Well, we already have seen that coming in, and another $15 up from here would be good news. But, Peter, you mentioned about silver. What is your sense on that? Because that follows a bit of industrial metals as well, where also has been a lot of pressure there. Well, if, exactly from an industrial side. You know, I think it'll probably go in lockstep with gold. It might, you know, from a correlation, if gold can, you know, jump one to two, you know, quick percent, I think silver will probably go up with the same momentum. Uh, they're closely correlated at the moment. I don't see any, you know, breakouts on either side. You might see, you know, a little bit further. But, uh, you know, at the present, I just keep a very close eye on the gold market. And if you're trading silver, that'll, uh, that'll get an uplift as well if that's where the market trends to. Absolutely. Kunal, bringing you in back again. And uh, while, of course, it is the international markets which have been very, very volatile, but the Indian rupee has been playing into the calculations here as well. In the Indian market terms, then, what is your sense for the gold and silver prices going forward from here?
Yeah, first, uh, I think the major reason for this downside in gold and silver is U.S. GDP number. I mean, at the start of the year, no one uh, even expected in a wild imagination that U.S. would come up with a GDP growth rate of 4.1%. Mm. And it, it actually happened. And that caused dollar to strengthen sharply again the basket of currencies and led to a fall in gold and silver prices. So I had been bullish on gold and silver. It had come down. And now I, I have more reason to be more bullish at these levels because I think from here, the downside is, is very limited. Going forward, I see a great opportunity for somebody who has not entered the position. This is the great time to build your position, position for the view horizon of six to eight months. And I think gold prices are going to be much higher than where they are trading right now. So $1,180 in India. In India, I think at current levels, you should buy. And I, I believe that in next uh, six to eight months, you are going to see by March 2019, you will see gold somewhere again trading near 29,900 to 30,300, these kind of levels. Uh, I am not sure where the currency would be at that juncture, but uh, I think uh, this is the best time for Indians who have not accumulated gold, start accumulating it, and six to nine, nine months down the line, you are going to see a good amount of returns in your gold portfolios. <laughs> Colin, what Kunal is saying must be clearly music to your ears right yeah, now. Yeah, it totally is. I think I'm going to take a clip recording of what uh, Kunal, Kunal is just saying said and, and, and just spread it in our whole uh, industry. Kunal, I suggest you charge royalty for that. But Colin, <laughs> coming back to you, what when you say 8,000 crores of business done at IIJS, how, break it down for us. Uh, how, what really precious metal are you taking into account here? Uh, you know, the large chunk obviously is gold. So, uh, you know, we don't have obviously get exact numbers because there are 1,500 co co uh, companies exhibiting and 40,000 mm. visitors. But uh, our guesstimate is that 75% of the business transacted over there is uh, plain gold jewelry. And 20, 25% is diamond jewelry plus uh, pole key and, uh, you know, the other sections. So, and this is obviously broken down into mainstream mass uh, manufactured and there's couture too. So, mm. It's it's all kind. It's everything which you can possibly buy in a piece of jewelry. There's colored stones. There's uh, um, uh, CZ jewelry. So you know, there's everything in mm -hmm. this. Co Colin, also tell us. Uh, you know, uh, we haven't seen India actually spruce up a lot in case of physical buying. The investment buying has been on the weaker side. The coins and coins and bars demand also has seen a decline. The other asset classes like equities perhaps have done well. How are you looking to bring gold back into the mainstream? Uh, what, what are the campaigns GJPC is working with, especially as we get into the festivities now? Uh, see, actually, GJPC, as the apex industry body, is doing, I would say, a lot of things. So we're we're battling on on all fronts. On one side, we're working with the government to form a domestic trade council. On the second side, we're also working very hard on having a special gold policy. So, so that uh, this industry is treated separately. On the third side, we're also working on uh, with the government to, to somehow make it easily available for exporters to avail of gold, whether it is gold loan schemes, whether it is smaller quantities of gold. So we're also working on that front. Besides that, we're doing all these buyer-seller meets, exhibitions, trade facilitation, so that we make it easier for the manufacturer to access retailers. Having said that, on the demand side, we're running, uh, I, I guess, I, I hope you all of you all have seen it, you know, this uh, huge campaign. So there are hoardings all from, you know, in, especially in Bombay, from Bandra to Burivli. We have hoardings. We're doing Times of India, Economic Times, you know, hopefully working with CNBC TV 18. You know, so we have this whole uh, campaign ha happening all over sections and where we are especially uh, emphasizing on the employment the industry generates, the contribution that our industry makes to the country's GDP, and the foreign exchange that we earn uh, for this uh, for the country. Besides that, we are obviously even talking about the softer aspects of what our industry contributes. It's to the health and the medi claim for all our workers. It's it's all kinds of things. So uh, I guess uh, everyone will see a lot more action happening on 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 that front over the next uh, three four months. And Colin, we're hoping also, to catch. Also coming on yeah. the export part of it. What are the numbers there? Because in the middle, I, I, somewhere in between, we did see those numbers dip as well. 
Exports this year and what we guesstimate will be down between 5 and 10 percent, okay. to be honest, uh, mm. in dollar terms, mm. uh, in, in rupee terms, since the rupee is devalued and maybe, you know, if it devalues a little bit before the 31st of March, then maybe we keep the numbers, but in dollar terms, we see a slight dip off between 5 and 10 percent. So what are the markets percent. that you're watching out for right now, foreign exports? Our main markets continue to be U.S. and China. Mm. U.S., as our fellow panelists have also said, is very volatile with mm. this whole trade war happening. So, you know, who knows? Anything can happen in the next uh, two quarters. But if all things remain equal, then America actually, especially with the GDP growth that they've had and consumer uh, demand being very strong, we expect it to be a very strong Christmas over there and Valentine's Day and Mother's Day. And China is also coming back very nicely. So our main two markets seem to be in a safe place right now. Our problems are more uh, because of, you know, the, the banking crisis that we've had. So, yes. you know, there's a little curb on uh, working capital limits for all the exporters, and that's affecting export. It's not the macro level demand. Actually, demand has been probably the best it's been in the last three years. So are those problems anywhere near being tackled? I understand you are talking to the government quite closely. We're talking to the government. We're talking to the bankers. bankers. I guess it's a process, hmm. like, uh, you know, any any crisis. And like someone said, never waste a good crisis. So, you know, we are trying hmm. to do the hmm. best, you know, to mitigate the risks of uh, bankers hmm. so that they have a good experience working with our industries. We want to make sure good promoters continue to get finance. But I think realistically, it's going to take a couple of quarters before uh, you see those before very strong things, numbers come back. Yeah, before the strong numbers come back, banks get uh, you know renewed confidence in our industry mm. and uh, exports are back. So All right, right. but uh, you know, Kunal, let me come back to you with such positive moves that we have seen and very. Uh, bullish view that you are holding on gold and perhaps silver as well you know what level would you advise buying right now and how much of a money deployment or a portfolio holding would you suggest when it comes to gold yeah uh, just uh, adding to what i said before uh, the u.s inflation is picking up there's a lot of uncertainty which is uh, there in the market going forward uh, in next two quarters. And I believe that uh, 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 the ideal percentage one should have in gold is definitely 8 to 10 percent. I mean, if you see what, what's happening in gold market, no one is talking about gold. I, I mean, before 2006 7 uh, this similar scenario was generated. I mean, the, the searches in gold on Google is at, at the lowest level. The positions on COMEX, uh, short positions are at record low. So all there are no, in, in fact, there are no reason on the textbook available uh, who, which will say, okay, gold is bullish. But the, f the thing is, everything is priced in. So U.S. strong GDP, weak Indian Chinese demand, everything is priced in. So uh, any, any trigger from here uh, may be in form of trade war. I don't know what's going to come. I think it's going to trigger a massive short covering. So I'm eyeing uh, conservatively by March 2019. Gold prices should again test thirteen hundred dollars. Uh, that is a conservative target which I am having, mm. and I may sound little over optimistic at this juncture. Mm. I don't know what is going to be the trigger, but I think gold prices are going to be much higher. And uh, on uh, for silver, also I am holding a similar view. Silver also uh, looking bullish to me, and on silver also I am expecting levels of seventeen and a half, eighteen, uh, at least conservatively by March two thousand nineteen. All right, gentlemen, you have been a very, very bullish uh, panel, really, when it comes to gold in sense of demand from Colin, in sense of price movement from Kunal, and, of course, the global cues coming in from you, Peter, as well. On that very positive note, that's a wrap on this edition of Commodity Champions. Thank you so much for watching.